Hello everyone, today we're going to be covering service objects in Rails. This is going to be a quick tutorial uh, because it's really not that interesting. We're going to create a new Rails application. Now I should note that pretty much everything I say in here is going to be subjective. It is not an objective truth. If anyone claims they objectively know what's better one way or the other for what I'm about to cover, uh, they probably uh, don't. So I'm going to CD into the video directory. I'm going to do a code dot and the video directory to open this up in VS Code. Uh, and the reason why I'm going to sound a little bit jaded is because I've read multiple blog posts about this and people uh, seem to care a whole lot about a topic that really just doesn't matter. Um, what we'll do is we'll create a, I don't know, a Rails G scaffold post. We'll give it a title and a body of type text. We'll generate that. Next we can do a Rails G migration, add views to post. Call it views of type integer run a rails db colon migrate command. And we could run a rails s command to start our server, exit out of here and forget we ever had the terminal open. Let's come into our routes.rb, do, oops, do a root to the post controller index action, save that. And then we can come into our, let me refresh this page. I'm wide open to Google search for that. Refresh refresh this page, come into our app, our views, our posts, and our post partial. And then after the post title, we can do a pipe, and then we'll just do something like pluralize the post.views and the word view. Something like that, All right? New post, test and case, create the post, and we have zero views. Okay, so that is uh, the entirety of our setup for this project. Now for the first subjective thing. Let's say we want to create a services directory. Inside of the services directory, we'll go all of the business logic for our application that we can't find a better place to put. The reason why it's subjective is because you could make the argument that you can find a better place to put it. It doesn't need to go into a service object directory. However, you are a developer, you are capable of your own independent thoughts, and the angry guy on the internet making an angry blog post for the 13th time today does not have uh, the authority to tell you what you can and cannot do. And just because he says he has experience does not mean that he is correct. Uh, I have many experiences in math classes, but two plus two does not equal five, no matter how many times I yell about it. So the, the issue with this is people will make the argument that you don't need service objects at all. Some people make the argument that you do. If you're watching this video, you might want to use a service object. So I'm going to tell you how to do that. I'm not going to sit here and tell you not to do it. You have two choices. You can put it in your lib directory or your app directory. You have other choices as well. You could put it pretty much anywhere else. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life, but the two places people generally seem to argue about where to put is the app and the lib. Now the lib directory, I couldn't find anything from the Rails guide specifically, but the app directory I saw mentioned in a video that mentioned a Rails guide. Uh, where they said to put it in the app directory because it gets auto-loaded. So in here, we'll create a folder, call it services, and then we have our services directory. Now, um, in this, we'll put all of our service objects, of course, but we need a service object to put in there. So let's come into our controllers, our post controller, and in here, we'll do something like uh, at post.increment our views, and then, oops, we need to include the exclamation mark. And we can come over here, we can refresh the page, and now every time we refresh, our view counter is gonna go up by one. However, maybe this is like a uh, large username method for, for like a Twitter username API call that gets your, your Twitter username or something. In that case, you might want to refactor this and put it somewhere else. In my case, I'm gonna be using the increment method as the example. It's gonna be contrived. I'm not here to waste your time making a Twitter API call just so we can see how to use a service object. In this case, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna comment this out and we're gonna come below it and we're gonna say this should go to a increment service and then this increment service can call a dot new, takes in a dot or takes in a app post. So what we're doing here is in our services directory, we're creating a new file, calling this the increment service dot RB. We'll create a class called increment service and then up here, we'll create a comment because this is a P-O-R-O, -O, which stands for plain old Ruby object. I don't like this because we're kind of like reinventing the wheel. We're saying, look at this clever solution I found to a problem. It's called a Poro. And then you explain it to someone and they're like, 
okay, yeah, but there's like tutorials on Ruby classes and objects that does the exact same thing. So why is this special? And they're like, yeah, because it's a plain old Ruby object in Rails. And you're like, okay, but it's it's still just Ruby. Like it doesn't, there's nothing special about this, but whatever, it's a, it's a plain old Ruby object here, I guess. So we have a class called increment service, def initialize, and because this is our constructor in, in Ruby language. Uh, and then in our constructor, we take in the post, or in this case, because it's a agnostic thing, we could take in a resource instead. And we say the at resource is equal to resource. So this creates an instance variable, which means we can use it in other methods in this service. Then we create our def increment. And then in here, we do something, well, actually let's call it increment views. And then in here we do at resource dot increment our view counter. Okay. So now we can come over to our post controller where we created the service and we can call dot increment views and you're now done with your service. If you come over here and you try to refresh though, you'll run into an error. So let's refresh uninitialized constant. Why is that? I told you this was auto loaded, but it's not working. Why for basically it's auto loaded as the application starts, it checks all of the folders in the app directory. We haven't restarted the app. So let's stop this, run it again, come into here, refresh the page, and there you go, it's now working as intended. We can refresh a bunch of times and it works just fine. Okay, so the next subjective thing, setting aside the location of the services directory and the semi-ridiculous debate, actually fully ridiculous debate about whether or not this should be singular or plural, is should you call this increment views because you're incrementing the views or should this be called the call method uh, because people like everything to have a call method and they use this as like the run the code method. If it's a call method, it would work like this, def call and, and it does the exact same thing. You could even do what GitHub Copilot suggesting and call the increment views method. Now, my personal take on this is who cares? Um, let's say you go to work for a company or you're trying to interview for a company and you do dot increment views during the interview. The interviewer will say, hey, um, I see what you're doing. At this company, we prefer to use a call method and we just pretend that, or we convince ourselves that every object is gonna have that call method if it's a service object. Uh, so can you just make it the call method uh, to conform to our standards? And you'll say, yeah, sure, I can do that. Uh, here you go, I'll change it to the call method. And then the interviewer will go, okay, cool, continue. And then you can just come in here and keep going about your day. That's how it works. You don't go to work for a company and they go, oh, they didn't know our super secret convention. Uh, they lost the coin flip, we're not hiring them anymore. Unless it's a bad company that you probably don't wanna work for to begin with. But in this case, it really doesn't matter. So you just, you pick one or the other, and then if you go work for some place that uses the other option, you just change it and then you, you deal with it. Uh, in this case, you can even make the argument, maybe you want to have a separate uh, thing here that increments the views by 400K uh, because you have a new live streaming service sponsored by or owned by a large gambling website uh, that you're trying to hide any gambling affiliation with, but you want it to look popular. So you make some viewers have 400K or some streamers have 400K views uh, by inflating the numbers. And then anyone that you don't like, you give the regular view count increment to. In that case, you might have two methods and then it might not make sense to just use a call method anymore. Uh, because you might need to specifically increment someone by 400k. Now, uh, this is fine and dandy. If we come in here and we refresh, you'll see it's still doing it by by one. So we got to change this to 400,000 as a second argument to increment. We come in here, we refresh the page, and now it'll go up a bunch and people will think you're more popular than you actually are. So. The basic idea for all of this is it is largely subjective. You have, you know, reinvented a class in in Ruby. Uh, you put it in a services directory that goes into either lib or app. If it's an app, you can just stop and restart the server. If it's in lib, you're going to have to add this to your loaded directory path. Probably, maybe I don't know, uh, but it doesn't matter either way. Uh, and then you have your your call and, and your method name debate with yourself. You decide what you like more and then you just use it like you would. It doesn't matter. This doesn't need to be called service. Uh, you could take this and rename this to the increment apple cart. I don't even know what I spelled there. 
It is the APLCAR. Okay, sure. And we come in here and we say this is the APLCAR. And then we grab this and we put it in here and we call increment APLCAR. And it still works because it's just a regular Ruby class. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just a services directory. Like I don't know. I promise I'm not padding for time with the video. It's just like this has become this huge debate about people like should I use uh, service objects in Rails? And there's like this this huge like comprehensive guide and beware of the service objects and refactoring your code with service objects and the description of what a plain old Ruby object is. Yeah, this is probably the most apt description ever. It's just a file that lives under a service directory. It doesn't, like we just proved, it doesn't even have to be called services. Like it is nice if it's called services because it's maintainable, but it doesn't need to. And this is the extent of it. You put your business logic in here and then the difference between this and helpers is the helper might have your uh, application wide logic that could work for multiple applications. Like let's say, uh, I don't know, you need to convert 400,000 to, uh, or 4 million to uh, 4M, right? You would have to convert it to 4M. Uh, maybe YouTube also has to convert it to 4M. So you both have that logic. Uh, in that case, it would make sense to put it in helpers, right? It's not, you're not actually sharing it with YouTube, but because it's something that could apply for another uh, thing, another website or web app, uh, you would put it in helpers incrementing your service by 400,000 so that your gambling website looks a bit more legit. That might be a business specific use case. In that case, you'd want to put it in your services directory or again, your Apple cart directory, because it really doesn't matter. People make these things up because they want to get clicks on the internet because getting clicks gets you money and gets you attention. And that cool dopamine rush, uh, similar to, uh, the people playing the runescape after 20 years of it being out. Uh, it's just, People just write things like don't take everything you see on the internet so seriously. Uh, I could have made all of this up. I promise I didn't, but I could have. I could also be wrong about this just because I say I have experience doesn't mean I have experience. Uh, I could have the wrong experience. I could have 10 years of experience as a mathematician tell you two plus two equals five. That doesn't make it true. Uh, and if someone tells you that you should use call instead of the method name, uh, it just means that they like their burgers medium rare and you like yours medium. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're both wrong. It just means that you have different preferences because you're people. Uh, and that is that is my, my, my spiel on um, service objects. Hopefully this was helpful and informative, and hopefully we can move on to uh, something that is less subjective in future videos, because if I have to read one more blog post about whether or not the service uh, keyword should be capitalized or not, I, I might go play in traffic. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.